Now that's one of the things that was brought up. All right, here's Boo Corrigan, who is uh, from NC State. He's the guy that unfortunately is the one that's going to take most of the bullets. When uh, Reese Davis, in the interview after the rankings were released, discussed the Horn Frogs in TCU. TCU, they've had some deficits, but they've come back to win. They, too, have an explosive offense like Ohio State and Tennessee. Alabama's had myriad struggles and a loss. Why Alabama? Why is Alabama ranked ahead of TCU? Well, I, I think you look at TCU, and again, we're looking for a balanced team, offense and defense, and they have gotten behind in some games. They've been able to come back and win those games. But when you look at Alabama uh, in the wins – uh, against Mississippi State at Arkansas, uh, at Texas, and obviously a three-point loss uh, at Tennessee. Uh, as a committee, we decided to go uh, Alabama 6 and TCU 7. You see TCU's schedule right there. And in the, in the Big 12 this year, it seems that every game has been highly competitive. As I glance down uh, the committee rankings, see TCU at 7 and then Kansas State at 13, Oklahoma State at 18, and then Texas also making it. Uh, one of the questions that people were wondering about is how the committee regarded uh, the balance in the Big 12, that there's, it's not as top-heavy as some of the other conferences. It's as if every game is, is a difficult one. How was the Big 12 evaluated in these discussions? Again, you know this uh, from previous years here, Reese. We, we really don't look at conferences. We're looking at individual teams. Um, the Kansas State win uh, last week over Oklahoma State was really uh, quite a win by them. But, but again, at the end of the day, we're just trying to pick the best teams that we can and make sure that we slot them the right way. All right, enough from Boo Corrigan. Let's discuss the comment. We're looking for a balanced team, offense and defense. They've got them. They gotten behind in games. Alabama, as Paul, you mentioned, trailed Texas most of the time at Austin. Had to come from behind to win that game. They trailed Tennessee a lot in that game and lost. That's an L O S T. And then also, my goodness, there's been other games. A and M, where they had A and M on the doorstep, and somehow A and M didn't get it in because of a last play on a pass that had no chance. Uh, balanced team. Is Alabama a balanced team? I, li I Listen, I love what Nick Saban's done. I really appreciate everything they've done. I, I, I'm, I'm blown away by it. But when they mentioned Ohio State earlier, Boo Corrigan, he mentioned how explosive their offense was. Why didn't he mention the fact they have like a top 10 defense, but he said those were the words he wanted. They're explosive. What the hell is TCU? Talk about explosive. And then you want to then Alabama has, has not fallen. But they've fallen behind three or four different times and lost a game. And would TCU beat Alabama straight up or Tennessee straight up? We don't know. That's why you have the playoffs so we might one day be able to know if, in fact, that would happen. But, yeah, and, but, it, it just, but it's go, crap out of his mouth. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense because you've got to like in you've got to apply the same logic everywhere if that's what you're going to do, and that's what not what they're doing. They're applying different logic to different things so they can they can justify what they came up with, and you know I, I get that Alabama is probably if you played the game against TCU ten times they'd win the majority of those ten times. They probably would, but. The point is, is that everyone should have the same benefits and penalties as they navigate through their schedule and not get into these minutia. And you could say, look, we, we think Alabama's a really talented team, but they have a loss, so we've ranked them at eighth, seventh or eighth because right now that loss, you know, knocks them back a bit. If they go through their season and win out, then, you know, they can reasonably find their way back into this four. Uh, one of the comments, again, this is another one from Boo Corrigan. We felt like the defense struggled to keep points off the board at times on TCU. Alabama gave up 52. 52 freaking points. That, of course, was something. And, and again, I, 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 we could do this every week and we'll lose our minds, as Craig mentioned. Uh, it, you knew it was coming, and here it is. But you almost like laugh because, oh, come on. You, you, do you think we're that stupid? Yes, you're sitting here yelling about it for 20 minutes. Of course, it's working. We're a college football show. Right, I'm but, going to get into it. Right, yeah. but you, you just asked the question, like, do you think we're that stupid? We're, we're ranting about it. Yeah, so clearly we are. So do we ignore it? No, I'm not saying that, but, like, yeah, it's obvious that they think we're that stupid. Pa 
freaking hair, the chair of the sea of peace sat in front of you and I at the summer. Yeah. Straight up said, we don't care. People are going to watch anyways. So, yes, they think we're that stupid. Are you going to ask, does the government think we're that stupid? Yes, they think we're that stupid. Like, of course they do. That's why they do it, and there's no ramifications. People are still going to watch college football. They have their biggest fan bases. They're going to weed out some, but they don't care if they weed out anybody because those are the small fan bases they don't care about. It's like, yes, it's it's a total uh, situation where they think we're that stupid. Well, Absolutely. That's, that's, and that's why I'm not sitting here getting all bent out of shape about the first set yeah. of the CFP I, I, I rankings. I understand that. And, and, and I'm not getting bent out of shape over Alabama of all teams being above TCU. Like, I get the benefit of the doubt. But, guys, do you think in an expanded playoff, Alabama's not going to be a shoe in every year yeah. no matter what? Of course they are. So we're we going to lose our minds over Bama, like, of all teams? Like, you know, everybody's got an argument on here. Clemson, whether you think they're unbeaten, good enough, better than TCU, like that's all up to interpretation. Alabama, that's all up to interpretation. I, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, well, TCU's clearly better than Clemson, and especially not when you got four more games left to play, potentially five. And could lose two right. or three of them. Right, so yeah. like who cares? Because well, by next week – here's the thing. Let me finish. By next week – good you're talking it could be about a, it. Good. Right, because I'm getting a chance to. So by next week, it could be a moot point uh, and, and just be all for naught. So let's let it play out. We're reacting intensely, like exactly like the intent of the show wants you to. And I'm not saying you don't sit back and, and just, oh, well, they're going to do what they want. But they are going to kind of do what they want anyways. Like, did, did chirping about Baylor and TCU in 2014, nearly 10 years ago, change anything? No, it almost uh, no. pissed them off. Yeah. Did Jeff Long absolutely sucking at his job change anything two guys later? No. Boo's up there just lying his tail off. Dude, you are a liar. You are not watching the games. It's clear by the word salad coming out of your mouth. You're a parrot repeating the points of the committee who set this up exactly the way that they wanted it to. You don't think it's any coincidence that Bama's where they are and then here's Texas in the back end of this. Look at where teams are positioned. They've set it up to have an argument for why so-and-so is where they are. They position these teams on the back end to reinforce the front end. A great point. We know that. And like, so to see that all set up the way that it is is not surprising. So, um, Will Texas I, be on the back end if TCU was even more in the conversation? If they beat Texas, will Texas be ranked 24, 25? Well, I think we got to get past PCU? the if first. Yeah. yeah. But no, I think, and Craig, the reason I know this is all going to change. The but reason what if I this do, was the last one, though. Yeah. Would we still have the same no, argument? But, it, yes. but it's not, yeah. But the reason I get mad is because it's the same reason. I don't, I don't approve of lobbyists. I don't approve of you treating me like I'm stupid. And so that's why I'm worked up because I'm like, when are we going to, when can we all collectively say, we're not this dumb? Stop treating us like we're this dumb. Well, but they. But again, then, like you said, we we kind of fell into their trap of talking about it, which is what they want. But Dustin, Dustin Lear, don't you think you would have at least more respect if the committee just said, "Listen, we know Alabama lost by three to the best team in the country, and it was on the road." Just say that. That'd be fine as well. So here's they, history, they, guys. They have set the best teams that they reinforced that line about. It's not about the record and about the conference, conference and about the whatever. It's about the best teams. We know that's BS. What, what is the definition? The best teams in their eyes. Who do they typically think the best teams are? The teams from the same exact places. Or the same this teams. Thing, this is not year three of this. We've seen how this works. And we know, and I saw the tweet. I already had this in mind, but I think it might have been Joel Clyde who had the same thing. If we all know if TCU was named Oklahoma or Texas, they would be in a different spot. We all know that. And we've known that how every single time there's any Big 12 team that's even somewhat involved, if they're not named Oklahoma and Texas, they basically have to break their back and go unbeaten to have any <coughs> chance whatsoever. Um, and, and that's the way that it is. It's a rigged game in so many ways. The only way to beat that game is like we constantly say when it comes to all these other topics as far as TV deals or whatever – you just have to go and win. That's all you can do is you just have to go and win, and pretty soon that's going to be even more difficult because the teams that already have every favor known to man are going to have even more favor uh, with even bigger deals and even more of a separation. And that's just the way the game's set up. Whether you like it or not, that's the way that it is. And they're going to appease everybody just enough, kind of like with this 12-team playoff, to say, no, everybody gets a chance, see? But it's absolutely going to be five Big Ten teams and five SEC teams and then the little Big 12 and you know, the little ACC champ will get their little pat on the head or the G5 team will get their pat on the head and get a little invite. But nobody's expecting them to make much noise at all. All right. And it's like, so, you know, 
if we're here in five weeks and TCU is unbeaten and they're still somehow like five or six, then I'll go crazy with y'all. But this is week number one. We know that Boo's not watching anything and Boo's just a parrot. Um, and it's very clear they're going to fall behind their, well, it's the eye test. It's the best teams that we think are the best teams. And that's ultimately what the decision is. It's not if you go out and beat this team, unless you're a certain team that needs to beat that team. But if you're TCU, all you can do to play Party Crasher is just go beat everybody on your schedule and absolutely force them into having to recognize you. Outside of that, you slip up one time, you're done, buddy. You're completely out of this thing. And that doesn't go for everybody, but it goes for a Big 12 team for sure. All right, well, here's why 